Well, my friends, just some brief thoughts today on uh, on the act of improvising um, from the perspective of the making of a new world. Um, what I mean by this is uh, it's an experience I've had many times. Um, the act of sitting down at the piano, in the case of my instrument of choice, and then freely improvising for however long, whether that's on my own uh, in the house with the headphones on or not, or whether it's in front of an audience, the act is pretty much the same. You conjure a new world into existence, which when you think about it is no mean feat, really. <laughs> um, it might not be a, a great world, you know, when you first start out in improvisation, you know, you. You, if you haven't developed um, certain skills, you know, you firstly just in the preliminary stages of developing your expertise, uh, all the same, you're still conjuring a little world into existence. And as you, you develop skills and um, you get the practice, the experience of performing, uh, you know, the feeling of when it's maybe not going so well, but dealing with that because it's not like you can stop and say, sorry, it's not going so well. <laughs> Um, you just kind of get stuck in and uh, develop strategies to steer the music in certain directions and also let what might seem like mistakes become fresh avenues for exploration. Dealing with the uh, contingency essentially of the event of, of improvised performance you conjure this, this new world so you, you're like a god <laughs> in a sense um, making a, a new universe on an idle Tuesday afternoon or something when you've finished all your other godlike business. Uh, but then of course when the performance finishes the world comes to a close. It's like um, a mini version of the birth and death of the universe. This thing explodes into existence and then at the end of it it just reduces to silence in inverted commas. Obviously as you, even in this improvisation of camera you can hear certain noises in the background when I finish speaking if I leave a gap that's silence for me but it's not silence from the world but at the end of a performance that's what I mean by the silence it returns back to silence um, the audience applauds hopefully um, and then everyone goes about their business returns home or whatever else they got planned for that day and the same also for the performer and it's a strange experience going from that almost godlike status on stage uh, or in the act of, you know, creation, creative practice, and then return into mere mortality, so to speak. Um, this is not to pedestal artists to say, you know, these amazing creators are any different to the people in the audience. It's just the actual sort of mechanism of performance, if you like that um, we almost have to think of uh, and imbue creative artists with this godlike status so that when they're there on the stage it's something that's worth checking out. Now you can do, and then when they're off the stage they're just back to being like a normal person. I remember seeing Joe Zawinul at Ronnie Scott's in London and when he was on stage he looked absolutely amazing, produced this amazing music. But when I briefly saw him off the stage, he just looked like a normal guy, you know? Um, and what you can do, um, once you're sort of aware of this, this, this mechanism in place by which we um, occasion these uh, extraordinary, um, uh, this extraordinary event of live performance, somebody on a stage or whatever passes for the stage, even if there's no stage in the actual venue, there's a performance space. Um, what you can do once you're aware of this particular apparatus, you can find it in everyday life. For example, if you go over the woods, over the park, and you concentrate uh, for however long, a few minutes, on a tree or on the grass, you can you can observe details that you are otherwise unaware of and you can confer on them the status of great deeds and acts like this time of year there's a lot of squirrels around burying nuts etc 
if you watch them for a certain amount of time they become like these tiny performers going about these really intricate beautiful little acts of creation or creative practice um, and in that sense you confer on them this godlike you know expert performer status and you're the the observer who's appreciating that and then when you carry on walking look back they're just squirrels burying nuts but you've actually created this you've, you've taken uh, an everyday event and you've turned it into uh, an, an instance of expert performance you didn't have to buy tickets for the event um, no one else was in attendance perhaps but all the same you've chosen to experience that as um, an act of supreme performance I think you'll understand where I'm coming from so I'll probably tail it off there I might go and watch the squirrels bury nuts for a little while it's a beautiful day this idea that we need to go to a symphony hall or a recognized venue to experience beautiful acts of creation and expert performance practice is actually a contrivance uh, it's, a, it's a good contrivance you know it's my job <laughs> professional musician but it's not something that is solely restricted to those particular venues those particular events it's all around us if we take the time and choose to notice it on that note friends take care and i'll speak to you soon bye bye